If you are an English player, Pokemon Go player, or planning on playing Wizards Unite, then you need to watch this video. Hey, hey magical or non-magical folk. Right, we are here to talk about points of interest. I am an OPR agent in Ingress, which means I get to approve and disapprove portal submissions or Pokestop submissions or whatever they're called nowadays. So in Ingress and Pokemon Go, you can submit portals. Okay, Pokemon Go is level 14. It's kind of restricted at the moment, but we are getting there. Coming up, we have examples of portals around the world. Thanks to Gita from Portkey Adventures and Lynette from Wizard PhD. We have a guide on how to submit portals in Ingress and how it will work in Pokemon Go. And I have an in-depth look at the end of the OPR agent screen and how we assess your portal submissions. So now we're flying over to the States to join Gita from Portkey Adventures and then Lynette from Wizard PhD. Hi, I'm Gita from the Portkey Adventures. I live in Colorado and I'm going to show you some of the typical Pokestops that you can find around here. So right now I'm actually on the backside of this big Pokestop. It's this giant rock and any kind of sculpture, anything that will tell you about anything of interest at all, try submitting that as a Pokestop because those work really well. Things that teach people about other things work really well in Niantic's eyes. So for example, this is the Bobby Yar Memorial and it's got some inscriptions written on it. So definitely a good Pokestop if you've got anything like this around. And on the flip side of things, I'm actually walking through this big long tunnel because right behind me is another one of those awesome inscription stones. These are really, really fun to find and I love learning things as I'm a Ravenclaw. So Pokestops are a really, really fun thing to me and I cannot wait to see how they incorporate them and what they'll be called in Wizards Unite. So as you can probably tell, I am in a bit of a religious type of park. We did ask and they let us play here as long as we're not here on any religious holidays. So make sure to be respectful of any type of religion or community around you before submitting any Pokestops. Try to make sure that they're okay with it. There are tons of churches that I've seen deleting Pokestops and gyms because people are very disrespectful sometimes and they'll just go and play and leave trash everywhere. So be respectful of where you're playing and and there you go. This is not necessarily a point of interest that teaches you about something, but it is a representation for this corner of this Star of David. So that's probably why it was accepted as a Pokestop. So behind me is another point of interest. As you can see, it's a little memorial. It lets you know on the ground what's going on and it had a little fountain there. Right here, as you can see in the game, it's just a little stream of running water and a little memorial plaque. Nice and easy. Behind me is the very center of all of this. It's the Bobby R Memorial Center because it's the center of this big circle at the bottom of the Star of David. Sorry about how loud it is. Definitely a crowded area. People love hanging out over here. And for some reason, there's an extra pokey stop over here. It looks like somebody submitted an extra little point of interest. So that's a nice spot to be able to sit down and grind after you put on some lures. So right behind me, what do you know? Here is another plaque. But this one for some reason was taken away. So make sure to keep that in mind. Sometimes for whatever reason, Niantic will delete pokey stops or gyms and it could just be an issue of people disrespecting the area. Other good points of interest to submit as Pokestops or portals or whatever here in America are church signs. Most churches are usually accepted unless there's a problem. And park signs are really, really good. So if there's any interesting shops around, if there's any interesting statues, if there's a waterfall or a fountain of some sort, those can all be submitted and will usually be accepted. Hey y'all, it's Lynette from Wizard PhD, and I am going on a scavenger hunt for Pokestops around Tucson, Arizona. It's a gorgeous day in Tucson. It's 90 degrees and this is as hot as it's gonna be all day today so this is a nice little end of summer treat. Tucson is a very beautiful city to live in. There's a lot of local art so this is one Tucson mural and then we're gonna head downtown visit 4th Avenue some of the major districts in Tucson and see what's around. So 
So not only can you go to cool artistic locations, you can also explore nature. We're on a trail, climbing a mountain. City of Tucson, our beautiful river from this weekend's rainstorms. And that's where we're headed next. Downtown, mountains with clouds. in a new district or a developing district in Tucson. There's not many Pokestops, so we're gonna try to find some cool looking things that might be cool places to have a new stop, a new point of interest. And we're also gonna eat. <laughs> We're downtown now. We're at this I Am Tucson mural, which is put up by Ben's Bells, which is a local nonprofit in Tucson, Arizona, focused on spreading kindness. Shout out to my parents for working at the post office. Every place that I've been to, actually, that has a post office is Pokes Up, even in rural places. Yep. I don't know if that's true, so if rural players, let me know. See, this is also another Ben's Bells Be Kind installation but it's not a polka stop and it should be a polka stop i think this ends our tucson journey for today we've been out for hours but at least we know some places will play wizards unite plenty of places to play and learn about your city so a big thanks to lynette from wizard phd and gita from port key adventures be sure to check out their channels there's some great videos on there and they went to a great deal of effort for this video so we are now going to go on the treasure hunt and we're going to find out what this is. Okay, so here we are. It's the Brani Park. Uh, well, it's so new, it's not even finished yet. So we're going to submit this one. So hold down the button. New portal. Take a photo. I think I'll take a photograph of the swings. Okay, I'd love to do. There's no cropping in this, which is a little bit unfortunate. So. And then not forget to just double check the map. It's getting a bit windy. Let's zoom in. We can see us. So there's the loop to my left. So we make it just bang in the middle. Kidook. Send and submit for review. That's another one done. Now to the mystery object, which is next to me here. Um, this has a little bit of a story to it. This is a monument to Frank A. Russell. He was a well-known prankster in the village. So he released a balloon in 1957 with a fake UFO, completely flashing lights. So a newspaper article, it says, uh, Frank wasn't pranking people for the sake of it. He wanted to make people talk and he wanted to do something similar. It's a celebration of imagination. As you can probably agree, it's quite an interesting object next to me. It does have a plaque next to it, which you have to get down to read. So what is this? It's a fuel tank from a tornado fighter bomber. It's now a monument to Frank's great hoax. It's here as a conversation starter to get people talking. So this is one of the weirder things around here. Um, it's actually, well, it's a treasure chest. It's actually part of an art project done in the area uh, where there's eight of these around and uh, the internal design of each one is was crafted by members of the estate. So the challenge is, can I find all eight of them? I know where four of them are, but yeah, that's as far as I know, so I'm going to go and find them. I'm trying to think of something to call this other than a bucket of balls. Um, I've come close to inspection, they're Brussels sprouts. So I guess it's the uh, Brussels sprout one. So here's the next one. This one is bicycle parts. Whew. There's quite a way between these. Okay, uh, this one is actual treasure. Well, 
looks like actual Trojan. So it's the final one. This was, well, it's the final one because apparently there's only five out of the eight which are out. So we have to wait a little while for the others to come along. There's a few designs. There's a, a teddy bear, a Saxon bowl, a little boat, a few bits and bobs. So here we are at the community orchard. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, portals tend to be like popular points of interest. So hopefully this will pass. It's not in the middle of a really busy area. And uh, I'll just show you this image now, the drain going up. So you can see just how remote we actually are. So now we have a fair idea of what we can submit. This is what we cannot submit. Places without safe pedestrian access. All Pokestop nominations must have pedestrian access, otherwise it will be rejected regardless of the quality of the Pokestop. Private residences and surrounding private residential property. Locations interfere with operations of fire stations, police stations and hospitals. Places on the grounds of childcare centres or primary secondary schools. Natural features such as landscapes, mountains, waterfalls. However, man-made points of interest connected with these natural features are great, such as plaques or informational signs. Objects that are not permanent, such as seasonal displays. And adult-oriented stores, such as liquor stores, adult entertainment, shooting ranges, firearm stores, etc., which is not a problem in the United Kingdom. So, to give you a bit more of a clue on how to submit a portal and get it approved, uh, here is what we see as an OPR agent. So here on the OPR screen, everything is based upon a star rating system. So is the title accurate? One, no. Medium star is I'm not sure. And the full stars is yes. Is it historically or culturally significant? One to five stars again. And is it visually unique? So these three sets of stars at the top are not a deciding factor on whether a point of interest actually gets approved or not. The next set of stars, should this be a portal, is the one that does. One is a no, has to be justified, although that justification isn't sent to the submitter. Middle star is not sure, I'm not quite sure what happens when you say you're not sure. Maybe it gets another OPR agent, I'm not sure, myself. And five stars for is definitely a portal. As we move further down the screen, we get to see the location. So we can check this on Google Maps and verify if it's actually a true location or not. Uh, if it's slightly out as an OPR agent, you can go in there and uh, just realign it to make sure it's in the right place. On the right hand side, we have a duplication check. So we can have a look around the area, make sure that the portal is unique. So then we get to star rate the location accuracy. I mean, usually I'll give it five stars if I know where it is and I realign it myself pretty much all the time. And can it be safely accessed? So that's pedestrian access and also is a place for people to gather in a group. The common reason for a point of interest being rejected is that the OPR agent cannot find it on that map or on the nearby street view. This could be due to the map being old or the street view being old, which is correct in the majority of cases. The good thing about the Pokemon submission system is that you get to take an extra photograph of the area. So make sure when you take a picture of your portal in the second photograph you capture something that can be seen on street view or can be seen by google maps so another reason why point of interest could be rejected so we cannot verify whether it's actually a permanent fixture or not um, when i was submitting the treasure chests the main worry was they didn't, didn't look like a permanent thing they looked like a seasonal thing and uh two of them have been rejected so far dang it so i've resubmitted them and changed the descriptions to say they are actually a permanent fixture. So what do you do if you're not a level 10 ingress player or not a level 40 Pokemon Go player? Well, there are many hangouts for ingress players and Pokemon Go players. So if you can contact your community that way, uh, an ingress player will be more than happy to go and submit a portal on your behalf, mainly because their handle gets associated with it. So my name is permanently against the points of interest that I actually put down earlier. You can also just download Ingress and use the comms system. I think you might have to pay it for a little while before you get access to the comms. But once you do that, you can say, hey, I am a new player. I have a new uh, portal that we could submit. Can anyone do it for me? So now it's over to you to submit points of interest for your area for the upcoming Wizards of the Night game, Pokemon Go and Ingress and everything else. I hope you find this video helpful. I don't think the OPR screen has been seen on any other YouTube channel I've seen so far. So hopefully you get a nice little insight into the back background of our work. So if you like this video, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and all those magical things, and I'll see you around.